So, Chairman, I can confirm that we're live and we can start the meeting, please. Thank you. And good evening and a warm welcome to the virtual meeting of the Central and South Planning Committee of the London Borough of Hillinga. This is a virtual meeting that is also being broadcast simultaneously on the Council's YouTube channel, Hillingdon London. Good evening to you all. My name is Councillor Steve Tuckwell and I am the chairman of this evening's meeting. Before we get into the, the main proceedings, there's a few things that we need to run through. The first being online housekeeping. I think all members and officers are very, very well versed in uh, how online housekeeping works. Centres around keeping your phones on, on silence, using your microphone appropriately, and in order to help the meeting flow, if you can indicate on the grid screen, I will call you to speak so we can keep one person speaking at a time. Liz will also be keeping a BDI if anybody is indicating as well, but we'll keep an eye out for that. Okay, as we're in virtual format, I have to do an attendance roll call. So I just need to check who we've got for both uh, members and officers. If I call your name, if you could just indicate if you are present. And we'll start off with Councillor Ahmed Walana. I'm present, Chairman. Good evening to you, Councillor Bira. Good evening, Chairman. I'm present. Good evening to you, Councillor Brightman. Good evening, Chairman. I'm present. Good evening. Councillor Chamdow. Present, Chairman. Good evening. Councillor Chubadar. Good evening, Chairman. I'm present. Good evening. Councillor Dillon. Good evening, Chairman. I'm present. Good evening. Uh, Councillor Duncan, the Labour lead. Good evening, Chairman. I'm present. Good evening, and Councillor Hagger. Good evening, Chair. Good evening. So, Liz, I'll make that a full house of members, yeah? Yes, it is. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. I need to do the same process for the officers supporting this evening's proceedings. So, I'll start with our planning officer this evening, Meg Harani. Good evening, Chairman. I'm present. Good evening. Uh, our head of planning, James Roger. I'm present, Chairman. Good evening. Uh, Democratic Services Officer and looking after us all this evening, Liz Penny. Uh, present, Chairman. Good evening. Our legal advisor this evening, Kerry Munro. Present, Chairman. Good evening. Good evening to you, Kerry. Okay, I think that's all, all officers uh, included as well, Liz, yeah? Yep, that's it, everybody. Thank you. Okay. In terms of technical meeting control this evening, if any councillor leaves partway through the virtual meeting through a lost connection, etc., then I will continue the meeting unless we are not quorum, which we know is three councillors. Importantly to note, any councillor that does leave the meeting part way through will not be able to, to participate in the item that has been presented. So that's the introductions and that's some of the housekeeping. We can now start to get into the main body of the agenda this evening. So we'll start with agenda item one this evening. Apologies for absence, Liz. Um, yes, we've received apologies from Councillor Alan Chapman and we have Councillor Becky Hagar substituting this evening. Okay, thank you and welcome to Councillor Hagar and thank you for stepping up. Uh, item two on the agenda this evening is declarations of interest in matters before the meeting this evening. Councillor Duncan. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I would like to declare an interest in item eight um, because although I haven't had any personal involvement in it, I do live in the same road and so uh, anyone might expect that I would uh, have a biased view about this. Okay. Now that's wholly appropriate, uh, Councillor Duncan. I take it you'll just be turning your camera off and muting your microphone, yeah, for that item. Okay. All right. We'll bring you in for the for the one when we've uh, concluded that one. So thank you for sharing that. Um, item number three on the agenda is to receive and agree the minutes of our previous meeting, which was on the fifth of November. I'm getting lots of nods and thumbs up. Okay, Liz, I can take it that those minutes are agreed. Item four this evening is to uh, cover off any matters that have been notified in advance or urgent, which we haven't got any. So I can swiftly move on to agenda item five, which is to confirm the agenda for this evening. <clears throat> and we've got items one to 13, which are in part one, which is the public part of the meeting. We then have items 14 to 19, which are in part two, which is the private part of the meeting. When we get to the end of part one, we will discontinue the YouTube feed and members and officers will debate those items in private. I can also confirm this evening that the items will be taken as they have been published. And we also have four petition items and four non-petition items to get through. So quite a hefty agenda, but I'm sure we'll get through it well. Okay, that's the, uh, the first part of the formal part of the proceedings. We can now start to move into the actual applications themselves. 
And Meg, I'd like to invite you to take us through agenda item six, please, which is the land behind one and three Lulworth Way in Hayes. Meg, over to you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is an application for land to the rear of one and three Lulworth Way. Uh, one and three Lulworth Way are a pair of semi detached properties, uh, and this involves the uh, development of uh, part of the rear gardens of these properties into. Uh, two uh, pair of semi-detached properties. Um, so members will know that uh, the council's policies are quite explicit in relation to uh, garden development and they are set out uh, quite clearly on pages 14 uh, and 15 uh, under section 7.01 and 7.07 um, and uh, the conclusion of uh, both of those uh, sections is that uh, the development of this garden land is, is unacceptable in principle. Um, there is also the issue with relation to the impact on existing properties uh, and in particular the two properties that front uh, numbers one and three um, and um, as members will see from uh, section 7.08 the impact on neighbours uh, the council's normal requirement is uh, to have a 21 meter distance between facing windows uh, and in this particular case um, that distance is not achieved in relation to those properties and uh, the maximum distance that can be achieved is approximately 17 meters which uh, falls well short and uh, therefore the existing properties uh, and the proposed properties will suffer uh, overlooking and uh, loss of privacy. So if I can just go to the presentation. So the actual site, uh, as I said, is uh, to the rear and it's this element here. The access to the uh, dwellings is uh, through here and then in there. So that's the site and the existing block plan and the proposed block plan showing two properties to the rear and the existing properties. So. Um, and members will note from that the distance uh, that I was speaking about between the existing and the proposed properties, uh, clearly not meeting the 21 metre required distance. And these are the design uh, and layout of the properties. Uh, they are a bit of an odd design there offset um, but in terms of their impact on the street scene it will be limited as they are uh, set behind the existing properties that's the uh, aerial photo and that's the access into the site and the site itself and looking at the surrounding properties that is the access into the site from the service road and these are just uh, photos of the site itself and the surrounding properties. And these are the two properties that uh, um, the gardens are a part of. Uh, and in, the main issue is in uh, relation to this particular property and uh, the distance between the habitable room windows to the rear uh, and the new properties. Uh, that are being proposed and again just the rear of the existing properties and these are some uh, photos of the street scene uh, along Loworth Way and that is the actual access into the site and these are the frontage properties and that's the access. And the access into the site itself. 
just looking out towards Lulworth Way uh, from the access road. And then these are opposite the site. And these are the properties that surround. So uh, in conclusion, um, in principle, the proposed development is unacceptable and also it's unacceptable in terms of its impact on uh, adjoining occupiers. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you for taking us through that, Meg. Um, this is a petition item. So um, Liz, do we have any statements to read out? Um, yes, Chairman, we've received a statement from um, the agent for this application. OK, so I'll just read it out to the committee. The council contended that the application would have a detrimental impact on the visual amenity. Currently, the land the proposal encompasses consists of wasteland and the application makes productive use of an otherwise unproductive, unsightly area. The argument that the development is unneighbourly is clearly contradicted by the supporting petition from local residents of Lulworth Way and surrounding areas. At present, the area is described by London Borough of Hillingdon as having substandard road servicing, absence of suitable lighting, and does not contribute to a safe and a comfortable and safe environment. Claims which are further supported by local residents stating they support the development as at present it is being used for criminal slash antisocial activities and is frequented by drug users. If this application is approved, the applicant aims to improve the condition of the road, provide adequate lighting, and has discussed with the residents supporting a current petition for the installation of a security gate. This is complying with Hillingdon Local Plan Part 1, which states in point 8 that new developments should create safe and secure environments that reduce crime, fear of crime, and antisocial behaviour. In response to our development being cramped, our design has been carefully considered to ensure we comply with the London Plan 3.5 Table 3.3, which sets out the space standards for new residential developments. The floor area exceeds the requirement of 79 square metres set out, and the amenity space for both dwellings also exceeds standards, and thus labelling the development as cramped is contradictory. The gardens are large for this location, as the majority of new houses constructed in the park all have smaller gardens, approx approximately 69 square metres, and consist of two or three bedroom terraced or semi-houses of about 95 square metres. Recent development constructed opposite 1 to 3 Lul Lulworth, a new house, 2A Lulworth Way, is constructed in the rear garden of 3739 Wimborne Avenue, which have smaller gardens. Our design is in keeping with this development. We completely disagree with the claim that this is backland development or garden grabbing for the following reasons. The wasteland behind the property is not part of the garden space of the two front houses. This land is on a completely separate title and not been used for a garden for many years and is currently separate to the houses. Separate land was bought from Thames Water to add to this space, which has never been used for a garden. The current garden size retained from, for the existing properties meets the specifications set out in London Plan and Hill, Hillingdon's local plan. The development will not be detrimental to the current front houses as the land has not been used for at least 10 years as a garden and has been overgrown wasteland for many years. This will not be de detrimental to 1 and 3 Lulworth Way and will benefit the borough by providing additional much needed housing. In the decision notice, reference is made to the Hillington Local pa Plan Part 2 and Policy DMH6, which has the presumption that development on land maintains local character and provides safe and secure amenity space and biodiversity. The existing land being referred to is in no way a positive reflection of local character and does not provide a safe play area for, for residents or bi biodiversity. So the argument the loss of this land will have a detrimental effect and thus should be refused is incomprehensible. When discussing the scheme with local residents, many express their distaste for this area as it stands, regarding it as an eyesore rather than a valuable piece of amenity land. To express the lack of security of the land, many confirmed that the land has been sub subjected to antisocial crimes, including theft, fly tipping and drugs over the last 30 years. There are logs of reports lodged with the police and the council on these matters. A number of residents have reported struggling to enjoy their amenity space due to debris being thrown from the boundary fences adjoining the rear garden. 
It has been concluded that the council has no issues with matters such as accessibility, parking, highways, refuse and trees. The applicant will accept and comply with any reasonable conditions if approved. The applicant is disappointed with the application process and feels that due to COVID-19, there was a lack of communication and transparency, which meant no amendments could be made to the application. The failure to communicate a missed deadlines has affected the outcome of this application. And that concludes the uh, submission from the agent. We have no further um, written representations on this item. Thank you, Chairman. Nothing from the council, is there? No, no, we don't have anything from war councillors. Okay. Councillors, sorry on this one. Okay, uh, okay. I'd like to thank uh, the, uh, the the uh, writer of that statement. Um, I'm sure the committee will appreciate the, uh, the the comments that have been made there. But uh, we've heard the presentation, we've heard the statement. So uh, let's uh, open this one up for debate. Who wants to start? Councillor Dillon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Followed by Councillor Duncan. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, the petitioner made some good points, um, and some some of the items are kind of within policy. But back plan, I see this as a back plan development, and um, Meg gave us a very good presentation on the reasons why they do not comply with their, the plans, do not comply with our policies, and um, they're quite they're ones that this committee has often uh, debated and uh, upheld. Those are uh, the particular one being the distance between the houses and uh, the overlooking aspect. So uh, for those reasons, I won't be voting for the application, but with the officer's recommendation. Um, I'll let any other speak, but if, uh, if there are, you know, I'll be, I'll be happy to uh, vote for it. Okay, thank you, Councillor. I'll take it that's not quite moving at this point, is it? No, okay, fine. Um, but we'll let other members have their uh, debate and then we'll go around. So I've got Councillor Duncan and then Councillor Chamdow. Uh, thank you, Chair. Well, I am happy to move it. It's very clearly against our policies. And uh, so, I mean, we would be minded to uh, not view this favourably. But when we look at it in detail, it has a detrimental effect on neighbouring properties. So that confirms uh, policy uh, considerations, if you like. Um, I do think the fact that this piece of land was sold off when the other two houses presumably were sold and uh, this site created, um, it, it literally was garden grabbing at that point because the, this, you know, some of it was originally part of the gardens of the existing houses and we can see that from the OS map. So, um, I think if necessary, I would ask officers to look at if if this is refused, if there are complaints from residents in the area, and I can well understand that if it is a very untidy site and there's antisocial behaviour there, that we look at considering uh, whether this site should be uh, the subject of um, uh, an untidy site notice where we do ask the owners to uh, take uh, better care and responsibility for it. But at this stage, in planning terms, I would like to move it. Thank you. Move the officer's recommendation for refusal, to be clear. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duncan. And I think the points around the untidy site, we'll get those in the minutes and uh, officers can pick that up outside of uh, this process. Councillor Chandell. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Yeah, Councillor Duncan's made the point. Uh, I was going to make regards the untidy site. I think it made a uh, what would could be considered a valid point about the site doesn't look great. Uh, but the other question I want to ask is is about the access road. I see you've got the uh, the main refusal points down. I'm not sold on the point of this access road. We've been there before where we've had uh, buildings constructed with an access road, which is very, very tight indeed for both pedestrians and cars. Now, this doesn't seem any different to me. I understand the report says there's no adverse effect. But, you know, you've got three garages there. You're going to introduce another two, three cars, whatever. So you're increasing by nearly 70 percent. Uh, and then you're going to expect uh, it could be small children, uh, adults walking down that only way of coming in and out, uh, plus cars, plus people parking their cars in their garages, uh, plus refuge. Uh, so I, I, I think that if the officers could give a little bit more on that, because I, I feel that should be a a valid point for refusal as well. 
Okay, thank you, Councillor Chandell. Meg, can you pick up the point around uh, access that uh, Councillor Chandell's raised? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. If I can just again go back to the presentation and Yeah, so hopefully members can see the, the photograph of the access. Um, members will see that it is fairly narrow, but it, it will serve only two properties. And um, it, I, can't, it is, I, I can't see anything. Can oh. you not see the presentation, Councillor? Maybe, yeah. Meg, if you um, close the I presentation can, and open it up again. Yeah, I can see it, Chair. Okay. I can see. Right again, Meg. Okay. Councillor Chairman, now can you see that now? No, anyway, carry on. I, I saw it the first time around. I know what he's talking about. So okay. just carry on. Yeah. So the photograph shows the, the access width um, and it is fairly narrow. Uh, our highways engineers have looked at that aspect and um, their view, I think, is that given that it does serve a limited number of properties, um, that they feel that it, it would be difficult to refuse on highway grounds and to uphold that on appeal. Um, it does serve at a maximum, it serves the three garages, as Council Dan Chandal said, uh, and the two proposed properties. So. Um, we we did consider whether there was a highway reason, but um, the highways officers do feel that in this particular case, because of the limited number of properties that it serves, that they wouldn't uh, be able to uphold uh, a reason um, at appeal. So for that reason, um, th there isn't a, a uh, reason on highway grounds or uh, access grounds on, uh, on the uh, papers before you. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Chandell, anyone want to come back on that? Don't agree with it, but you know that's that's the experts' report. Uh, but we've been on site visits where we've had similar situations, and it's it's not about balance of probability. You know what it looks like. We've seen what it looks like. You're having a car coming down there and somebody walking down there. And it says in the report the lighting is not very good. Uh, the road sub uh, the, the surface is substandard. Uh, now somebody walking down there in the dark whether it's one car, whether it's four cars or 10 cars, the point is, I don't feel that is suitable. But, you know, if, if the officers, you know, the experts are saying no, well, I'm just saying I'll just put my uh, two pence in worth for that. And also, uh, if that's not going to be put as a refusal reason, I, with the rest of it, I'll, I'll be happy to second it. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Chandler. I've got, so the head of planning wants to come in, and I'm sure he's going to talk about the length of the act of progress. Yeah, I, actually, I was going to talk about the length because the, the, the length is an important factor. So there was a case recently off North, North Common in Uxbridge uh, where there was a length of road of circa 100 metres or it was a very long section of road. Uh, and the council did refuse that because of the uh, what was, de it was deemed to be a substandard access that did serve a larger number of properties. But, in, but it was the length that was quite important, which is why I think the appeal was dismissed. Um, there is a reason why 45 metres is often cited because that's that's the distance if a fire appliance can't go down the access. Uh, that anything further than that can cause a problem to the fire service. We have checked this access; it would the houses would be well within 45 metres. Uh, uh, now that isn't the only factor when looking at accesses, but it certainly is a. Uh, the length of the access is, is an important factor. So, as Meg said, it is just two dwellings, but uh, I, 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 I'm more comfortable that it's that we shouldn't be adding a reason because it's quite a short access. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, James. Okay, um, we are moved and we are seconded. Oh, Councillor Duncan. Uh, thank you. Um could I just take up that point a, a little more? Um, because is this uh, access road uh, to be to remain as it is? It's not going to be surfaced at all. Do I just ask officers that? Meg, I think you said it was going to be resurfaced, but can you just? Yeah, I think I think the um, 
the proposal is to resurface it totally uh, and to put lighting there as well uh, at the applicant's expense. Um, the other issue is that uh, um, it does the, the, the access road is narrow uh, at the start where the um, the building the uh, the garage the large fairly large garage is uh, but it does widen out beyond that um, and again that is evident on the photographs if uh, if I show that to members again so thank you because I do think the surface, if they're going to bring it up to a standard, I agree it's narrow and I do take Councillor Chamdow's point, um, but if they are going to bring it up to a hard surface tarmac area or, or whatever, then I think it is a little bit different and to have some lighting, but otherwise um, somebody pushing a pram or pushchair or uh, disabled access for somebody in a wheelchair would be impossible. So uh, as long as we can have assurance that it is going to be at a, a good surfaced level, then I think it is more difficult to object to that. So, yeah, so it is, it is proposed to be surfaced, but also if you look at the photograph, the actual uh, width of it um is narrow up to this point and then beyond that expands so oh, I if i go yeah. to the um the later photographs this one in particular you'll see that um mm. the, the the actual narrow bit is is fairly short length uh, mm. and then it widens out um by about uh, at least a meter and a half to two meters um so it is uh beyond that it is a uh, fairly wide uh, access way and that width is carried on uh, all the way down to the access into the site so um, it is narrow at the beginning but it does widen out uh, beyond thank you chairman yeah thank thank you chairman yeah that clarifies okay. the matter well i'm not seeing any other members indicate so we are moved and we are seconded officers recommendation to refuse this application i'm going to go to the vote I'm going to start with Councillor Ahmed Walana. Chairman, uh, I'll go with the officer recommendations to refuse it. Thank you. Councillor Pira. Thank you, Chairman. I go with the officer's recommendation to refuse it. Thank you, Councillor Brightman. I go with the officer's recommendations to refuse, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor <laughs> Chamdow seconded with uh, Councillor Chubidar. For officers, uh, refu for officers recommendation, refusal, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Dillon. Move with officers' recommendation. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Duncan, you moved, and Councillor Hagger. Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Right, I make that Liz eight out of eight unanimous to refuse item six this evening. Can you confirm? Yes, Chairman, that's confirmed. Okay, I can confirm. Agenda item six this evening is refused. Thank you to everybody participating in the debate. We can now move on to agenda item seven, which is three newly close. Members will remember this from the 1st of July. Uh, we debated this item um on that at that meeting uh, and we did defer the item um for some further investigations on access and parking and to establish um a proposed or an alleged second hmo in the close um <clears throat> this is a petition item listed but i can also confirm that we've had no further petitions so uh, the petition speaking rights or statement rights have been exercised I believe that's the same for ward councillor comments. If you remember, councillor Mills put in a statement at the last meeting. Um, we've not had any other ward councillor statements, have we, Liz? Uh, no, Chairman, we haven't received any further statements from anybody in relation well, there'll to there'll this. Be no statements. There'll be no statements to read out, but I'm sure members will be able to remember what was said at the meeting on the 1st of July. So, Meg, I'm going to hand over to you to take us all through this uh, item this evening. Thank you, Chairman. Um, three new link close uh, members will recall this uh, coming before the committee on the 1st of July. Uh, it was deferred uh, for a number of reasons. Um, the first being parking and access. Um, and in relation to that, we've received a 
uh, a revised drawing uh, which indicates clearly that there is sufficient maneuvering space uh, and using the existing crossover uh, and for three parking spaces within the site. Um, and the three parking spaces comply with the, uh, the council standards. Um, it is now proposed to demolish the uh, existing garage uh, sited on the frontage uh, and that frees up space to make sure that uh, those spaces are usable uh, and manoeuvrable uh, into and out of. Um, members will have seen the uh, addendum sheet. Um, the second uh, reason that it was deferred was uh, for uh, investigation into uh, whether there was a second and, or another HMO in Newling Close. Um, and officers have checked. Um, the council's records show uh, no HMO, there's no license. Uh, we have checked the council tax records um, and that shows that there is a, a student accommodation or student house uh, at number nine. Well, we guess it's number nine, but we uh, they're not allowed to tell us uh, under data protection. Um, that all they can tell us is that there are 12 properties that are paying uh, the normal council tax and one paying uh, as a student house. Um, so we are told that uh, we assume that that is number nine um, and uh, members will see from the addendum sheet that uh, I have revised the figures. Uh, if you take into account number nine, then uh, the uh, percentage of uh, HMOs uh, would be 15.38 or 15.4. Um, and it is really up to members. Uh, your officer's view is that whilst it does exceed the 15% limitation that's set out within the policy, it would be difficult for us to justify uh, that there would be a, an impact because of that um, ex excess, if you like, of 0.4%, um, that the impact would be unacceptable uh, in terms of noise and disturbance. So. Um, your officer's view is that uh, we would find it difficult to justify that. However, it is for members to uh, decide whether um, that is particularly the case and therefore they would need to debate uh, that issue, I think. Um, if I can go to the presentation. So this is a site, I do apologize to members uh, for the uh, calculations. I was misled by the numbering, first of all, with there being 13 properties and 10A and 10. Uh, and I was thinking that uh, there was 14 properties and I was also uh, misled by the OS map in thinking that this was number seven, when in fact it's uh, part of number six and it is in fact the uh, garage to number six. So. Uh, I do apologise for that. There are 13 properties and the revised figures are based on that. This is the uh, site plan and the proposed plans. They haven't changed from the uh, uh, the presentation at, uh, on the 1st of July. Uh, this is the existing with the existing garage in this position and the proposed. Um, Three, met, three officers have been on site, the case officer, uh, the highways officer and myself uh, have been on site and I can confirm uh, that the access is shown in the right position and uh, is the right shown to be the size that it is uh, on, on the ground. Um, and they can members can see from this that it is uh, possible to manoeuvre in and out of all three spaces without obstructing uh, or without being obstructed by any of the other spaces. So uh, the proposal does provide three spaces um, and your officers consider that to be acceptable. Um, and I can just go to, <clears throat> so this is the garage which is proposed to be demolished. These are old photographs taken um, 
back in the early part of this year. So um, work has gone on to the, this site since then. Uh, the garden has been resurfaced. Um, and it does look slightly different. The garage is still there. And these are the adjoining properties. The site isn't in a parking management scheme as such in that there are no um, uh, residence parking bays set out on the road. Uh, it is in a, uh, <clears throat> in a road where there are yellow lines, so there are parking restrictions, um, but there, there, there's not uh, any parking bays marked out on the road um, and therefore we we wouldn't be able to control uh, parking permits through a 106 agreement um, so it is recommended for approval your officers feel that it does comply um, with the uh, council's requirements and therefore um, feel that it will be difficult to refuse this thank you chairman Thank you for that, Meg. Um, I've already seen a, a couple of councillors indicate, but I can see our head of planning um, also just wants to add to your presentation. I think there, Meg. So, James? Yes, yeah, yeah, so thank you, Chairman. So, um, Meg has confirmed that there is an issue with one of the criteria of policy DMH5, which concerns the number of HMOs in the street, that it does exceed 15%. Uh, nonetheless, uh, as with all planning proposals, members need to consider whether the proposal before them causes any harm. With respect to policy DMH5, there are three key ki kind of issues that, that come out with HMOs. Uh, one of them relates to accessibility and parking. Uh, by accessibility, I'm talking about public transport. And it's clear to your officers that this proposal, because the three parking spaces were, is fully compliant in that regard. The, the second sort of key issue is the amenity uh, uh, and the living conditions for the intended occupiers. And again, it's actually quite clear cut that this proposal is policy compliant. The third criteria is to do with the amenity of neighbouring occupiers. This is noise, disturbance and those kind of issues. Uh, that is a matter of, of opinion. Uh, and I would like to suggest to members that they should perhaps focus their debate on that issue rather than the other two issues, which in your officer's opinion are actually quite clear cut uh, and the scheme it, it is in, in effect completely compliant with. Thank you, Chairman. No, thank you for that, James. Um, and uh, I think some, some wise words that I'm sure will be echoing in members is when they start the debate. So. We've got no speaking rights on this item, so we can go straight into that debate. And I've already had Councillor Tamdow uh, indicate, followed by Councillor Hagger. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, and thank you, James. Uh, actually, I agree with about the parking. I've visited the site myself. Uh, and yeah, with the garage taken away, that should be OK. Uh, for me, uh, well, we, we, we've gone over policy regards HMO, so the 15 4%, so we're out of policy there straight away. Um, for me, it, it is it, it's it's a living conditions of the occupants and the neighbouring properties, because you know this this is a re relatively quiet area. Uh, the houses are closely spaced. Now, if we go onto page thirty five, where you see the map, if you look, the actual road itself, the residential properties start halfway up the street. There's nothing on your left. There's nothing on your right. Yeah, and the applicant's property sits on the left. Uh, so that means anytime somebody goes in and out, they go past virtually all the houses. Uh, there's very low background noise levels, and I believe there's the accessibility of the liver conditions to be affected by the introduction of a more intensive use. They're saying it's for six people, but it's got the potential for eight. It's in the report as well. And I haven't seen no mitigating controls to actually prevent that happening because you've got a couple of double rooms as well uh in our policy i mean it states that you know we seek to ensure development in a residential area complements or improves the amenity of the area with no mitigation measures that are proposed i think this development conflicts with our policies uh, which says that you know the noise annoyance will be really escalating to our a different level and if you look at the map again anytime you've got six even if it's six 
You've got six different individuals come in here. There's possibility of six individual cars, six different deliveries, six different guests coming into the house, possibly from each one. Now, they will go past every single house virtually. So I think personally think there would be harm. And I think it would be demonstrated. And once again, there's no mitigating controls at all in the report. Uh, so I'm not I'm not sold on this. Uh, and I'll be interested to hear what everybody else thinks. Thank you, Councillor Chamdow. I've got uh, Councillor Hagger and then I've got Councillor Chubadar's indicators. So Councillor Hagger. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I completely agree, actually, with exactly what um, Councillor Roy Chamdow And looking at this and looking really in depth into the paperwork, it is, it is a small area. And if you're looking at six occupants at the minimum, and if you're looking, I, I take it we've already said that we think it's probably going to be students, they're going to be young occupants. And then if you add on to that how many people that they would or may be having round, um, you're certainly going to have a double amount of, if not treble, of people passing and being around that vicinity. So, I mean, you could easily take it up to, and we're talking about extra guests here. So I'm looking at between six, 12, maybe even 20. It is such a small area, such a small area. And I would be very seriously concerned actually about the, the noise and disturbance uh, in that. So I think that's something we really need to take seriously into account. The neighbors are near, the area is small. It's going to have an impact. It is going to have an impact because there are not six people there already. So it is going to have an impact on it. So for me, I have to say, I'm I'm really concerned about it. So I would definitely wouldn't go with officers recommendations. I want to have a really good look at this. And also we can't, we can't miss out, even though we're not up on the percentage of 15%, we are close to it. There are lots of HMOs in that area. And I, I know that it, we can't do anything with that, but we can't leave it out either. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hagger. Uh, I've got Councillor Tubidar followed by Councillor Brightman. So Councillor Tubidar and then Councillor Duncan. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, I can see that uh, based on the report, we already have got a house in this area, which is a student house. And with the students, it comes quite a lot of noise. It is a very quiet area. And uh, I agree entirely with the previous two councillors that uh, noise and disturbance is a huge issue for the neighbouring properties. And based on that, I will be voting against the uh, uh, approval of this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jubilar. Councillor Brightman, I've got Councillor Duncan and then Councillor Ahmed Walana. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I have to say I sort of pretty much mirror what all my colleagues have said before me, uh, particularly as it's a cul-de-sac. Were it a, a through road, there would be different routes in and out, but you're doubling up on access. People are going up and down the same area where, uh, and so that makes it e seem even more intrusive. And um, And there's quite a lot of elderly people there, I understand. So, you know, the, there is a conflict between young people's activities and old people's activities. So I would be uh, minded on this occasion to not go with officers' recommendations, I'm afraid. OK, thank you for that, Councillor Brightman. Got Councillor Duncan. Oh, before we go to Councillor Duncan, I've got uh, Meg might want to come in and pick up any other, anything he's heard so far. So I will come to you, Councillor, but we'll just let Meg come in. Sorry, Chairman, um, I should have said in my presentation, it's just a point of procedure. Uh, we have received an appeal against non-determination on this, so members won't be refusing to or voting to refuse or approve the application. Uh, they'll be voting on the basis that uh, had an appeal not been received, then they would have approved or refused it. Um, so depending, obviously, on uh, which way the members vote will depend on whether the appeal proceeds or not. Thank you, Chairman. Sorry, I should. I, I, I don't mean to um, interrupt to the debate. No, that's hot off the press, that one. So we'll go to uh, Councillor Duncan and then we've got Councillor Ahmed Walana. And then if no other members are indicating, I'll, I will open it up to James to um, help us through this one, because I think we're getting a sense of the uh, 
of the opinion of the committee so far. So, Councillor Duncan. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I hear the points raised by um, other councillor colleagues on the committee, and uh, I do take note. I think this is in Councillor Chamdal's uh, ward, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so possibly he, you know, knows the area, you know, a little better than any of us. Um, but I do know this area and I do know this road as it happens and one of the things this is a petition item because one of the things in the original petition from residents was that uh, they were concerned about noise pollution and the fact that there is an existing HMO, an existing student house, um, they thought that a second would uh, uh, change the character of it. Now, clearly, they have already experienced some change with having one student house in the area, which has perhaps informed their objections and why they've they've come forward. I don't want to speculate about that, but certainly, um, it is a very tight site. It's a, a small cul-de-sac, and a few properties in there and I think we all know that even if it's a through road if you have one house that can be quite noisy it can really affect quite a wide area there there's properties at the side and rear and also because it's set back slightly to the front so the um, rear garden of I think it would be number three possibly um, or maybe it's two, uh, but certainly the adjoining property would be affected as well. So I think we need to have good planning reasons if we're going to refuse this. And uh, I would like to suggest that they are around um, uh, concerns regarding an existing HMO, which are likely to be exacerbated by a second HMO, by the uh, site constraints it's a small site it's not as if this is a property in with very large grounds which separate it from uh, adjoining properties or those at the rear so it's likely to closely impact on other uh, adjoining properties so they would be the concerns that I would raise and um, put forward as suggestions for other members to possibly consider yeah. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Duncan. Councillor uh, um, James Roger has indicated, but I, I'd want to hear from Councillor Ahmed Wallana, and then I'm going to go to James because I think we're going to we're going to need to navigate through um, some uh, solid planning ground to uh, take this. Where I think the uh, the comments are taking us. So, Councillor Ahmed Wallana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, this uh, HMO will not be uh, harmonious in that uh, small area. Aware, uh, we are aware that uh, uh, more elderly people live, and uh, it is not going to uh, harmonise uh, with with that environment. And we can't simply uh, say that there will be six uh, occupants uh, in the HMO. But uh, we know, in the, for the fact, that you can say maybe more than twelve. So it's not only. A, a noise issue. It's uh, it, it will attract so many other issues. Like uh, we have a young residents uh, in that HMO, maybe uh, antisocial behavior or noise or something else as well. So uh, and also just to echo to what uh, my colleagues have said, um, I'm not going to vote for this HMO. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Ahmed Malana. Right. Um, James, I think the uh, the sense and mood of, of members has been uh, clearly articulated. Um, help. Yeah, so um, I it, it, the direction of travel and members doesn't surprise me, so I did do a bit of homework ahead of tonight's meeting. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, you know, if I, if I do do some homework ahead of these meetings, it can only be helpful. Um, I, I looked at uh, appeals concerning HMOs and found a very interesting appeal decision. Uh, so there was an appeal at the end of 2018 concerning a property on Morello Avenue. Now, Morello Avenue is a quiet road, but it has more houses than New Lynn Close. 
and the, the fact that it was a quiet robot was actually relevant to the appeal decision. Uh, that particular application, there was a concern over parking, but the inspector uh, gave short thrift to that. Uh, there was a concern over a room uh, that um, there was a, an issue that there was an internal room without a window and the inspector did not dismiss the appeal on that. But the inspector did dismiss the appeal on the neighbour impact issue and noise and disturbance. And the refusal reason for that application had the words, the proposal would result in an over intensive use of the site to the detriment of the residential amenities of adjoining occupiers by reason of noise and disturbance. And the inspector agreed with this authority with regard to that reason and dismissed an appeal uh, for a large HMO on Morello Avenue. Uh, as members have discussed, um, this is a larger HMO proposal at the end of a quiet cul de sac. So, um, I, I think officers could argue on the committee's behalf for refusal reason um, that references the words that I've just said, but also cross references the fact that there's already an HMO in the streets uh, for exactly the words Councillor Duncan said, uh, and my my actual words, which I think are very similar to hers in my notes are, which would be exacerbated by the concentration of HMOs in the cul-de-sac, which I think is very similar to what Councillor Duncan said. So uh, 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 I think if members are minded to refuse it, um, I actually have a refusal reason written here. Do you want me to go as far as reading it out, Chairman? I think we'll be. I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine on that. Uh, yeah. It, you know, if, if you're happy to delegate to me, then obviously members do need to vote on this. But uh, I, I, I'm comfortable if you do delegate to me that. Um, uh, the, 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 there is a potential few refusal reason that officers could defend that appeal, uh, uh, using the words that, that, that I've outlined, Chairman. No, thank you for that, James. I've got Councillor Chemdow indicating, so, Councillor? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, James, for that. Yes, and uh, just on Councillor Duncan's, yeah, this is my ward. Uh, I know the road very well. Uh, my ward is also, uh, Moreno is also in my ward. Uh, so, you know, if there's any confidence, I know officers are very always concerned about how will it stand up in appeal. Well, I think this, this will stand up very well in appeal because Morello is a huge road compared to this. And as I said in my opening uh, uh, statement, you know, the houses here are closely spaced together and it's, it's not the whole road. This is way up the top. Now, if you compare Morello to this road, I know each case on its own merits, but if the officers have any doubt about this, I mean, Morello is a, a very long road with, you know, I don't know, 70, 80, 100 houses, possibly off the top of my head. I can't remember. But it's completely different to this. Now, this is this is like a shoebox compared to Morello. So I think the officers should have uh, confidence that this will stand up. Should it go or it is going to appeal? And I'll I, and I'll, I'll, I'll like to formally move it. Uh, go against the officer's recommendation. OK, thank you, Councillor Chandas. You're moving for refusal. Yes, Chairman. Okay. Before we on the, go, on the grounds, on the grounds that were said, uh, with the additional comments from Councillor Duncan, uh, with the refusal reason, uh, which was said about uh, by James, and we'll uh, just delegate uh, to the head of planning to word up the refusal reason. Before I go to other members, because I'm going to need someone to second this, I am going to invite Kerry just to give us a couple of comments, because obviously this does uh, this is going against officers' recommendation. So, Kerry, if you um, if you could just give us a, a couple of words of wisdom from a legal perspective. Yes, Chairman. Well, um, I mean, you all as decision makers um, have read the report and the addendum, and you have the you you are best placed to decide um, your thoughts on it. So, you've heard the statistics about. 15% uh, on the HMO, it's 15.4, which takes it out. Um, but still, there is a planning judgment on, on your part to decide what your preference is. So I've heard the majority of the members today decide that this additional HMO will exacerbate the, um, it will be an intensity in the area and um, they've also got concerns about the noise and disruption um, with the um, additional occupiers on the road and 
the additional concern that the mixture of um, the age range. Um, so basically, my take is that um, members are well entitled to um, go against officers' recommendations. They've, everything they have said is based on material uh, planning material considerations. Um, yeah, uh, I would say that we have to, I mean, Marola is a completely different road. As Councillor Chandel says, we have to focus on each case on its facts and merits. The issue that has been raised is the HMO, which is what the development the, um, the uh, development plan has addressed. Um, so it's outside policy and um, the parking has been conceded. There's no issue taken there. Um, so I think the, the two po po poignant points is the HMO and the... Um, additional uh, noise and um, uh, the use in the area, the intensity of the use. I think those two things are not settling well with members and they're in the right to um, overturn. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your uh, legal counsel there, Kerry. I can see Councillor Brightman indicating there. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to say that I'm happy to second uh, Councillor Chamdal's uh, position and go against officers' recommendations okay. and delegated powers to James. Thank you for that, Councillor Brightman. Right, I'm not seeing any other members indicate, so I think we can go to the vote on this one. So, Councillor Ahmed Walana, just to remind you, we are moved to refuse officers' recommendation. Mr. Chairman, I would like to go against the officers' recommendation and mm -hmm. with the delegated authority. Uh, to James. Okay, Councillor Bira. <clears throat> thank you, Chairman. I'd like to go and refuse application bill conditions on. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Brightman, you seconded. Councillor Chamdell, you moved. So that's Councillor Tubidar. For refusal, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Dillon. For refusal, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Duncan. Yes, refuse the application. Thank you. And Councillor Hagger. Yes, refuse the application, Chair. Okay, thank you. Liz, I make that unanimous eight to refusal of this application. Can you confirm? Yes, Chairman, that's correct. Okay, well, item seven then this evening, I can confirm, is refused, and we will be delegating refusal reasons to the head of planning to, um, to word up. So thank you very much for a very healthy debate on item seven. We can now move on to item eight, which uh, Councillor Duncan, you're going to disconnect and have a cup of tea, I guess, at this point. I, I will, I will, Chair. Can you tell me how you will notify me? Yeah, I think um, we'll get James to share his wording with uh, myself and yourself and the committee. Uh, oh, I'm back. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be leaving for this oh. item. If you just, um, if you just turn your uh, camera off and then I know just how to change. do that. Yeah. Yeah. How, how are you going to contact me to get back? That's well, what I'm saying. Chairman, I can ring her if you want it. If, if you could, please, Councillor Bureau. I thought you were just going to not yeah. disconnect. Just turn your your phone on mute and um, okay. Connect your camera. You can okay. still hear us, but not participate. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, as long as I'm clear. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Right. Agenda item eight, 10 Phrase Avenue. Meg, can you take us through that one, please? Thank you, Chairman. 10 Phrase Avenue is a detached bungalow um, situated within the Garden City, West Drayton area of special local character. Uh, the proposal before you is for substantial extensions to it. Uh, in the form of a uh, front extension, a rear extension, uh, and roof extensions. Um, and um, members will see that uh, when, when, when we get to the presentation, the, uh, the extensions that are proposed are not in character with the existing property or uh, the adjoining properties. Uh, they are substantially larger than uh, uh, we would normally permit uh, within... Um, uh, the council's guidance and standards as set out in uh, the uh, part two policies uh, and therefore we are recommending uh, refusal for four reasons uh, one is the uh, roof works uh, the second is the uh, extensions to the front um, and then 
the impact on the adjoining occupiers uh, and finally the um, the reduction in the amount of amenity space not meeting the council standards um, so for those four reasons we are recommending refusal if I can just go to the presentation Okay, so this is the site itself, detached bungalow constraints. The purple color is the uh, extent of the area special local character. Uh, it does adjoin uh, a conservation area. So um, it is in an area which is particularly uh, um, protected uh, and the extent of the extensions can be seen. It's the hatched area that obviously doesn't show the roof extensions uh, that are proposed as well, but the hatched area shows the uh, uh, the footprint of the extensions that are proposed to the side and the rear. And uh, it's all of this area here that is proposed. As members can see, this is uh, existing. And so you have an extension to the front in here um, and then works to the rear here and above that. So uh, this is the extent, the roof plan, this is the existing plan. Members will see that it has a, uh, what we would normally call a pyramid roof uh, and that's proposed to be changed. So it has a gable end to the rear, uh, a very large gable end. Um, and members will see that in the elevations that are proposed there. So. Uh, existing front elevations, members can see the changes that are being made um, and also the, particularly the changes to the rear. So, um, and then the extent of that uh, rear changes are set out, particularly on these two side elevations. It goes uh, back some substantial distance here uh, and that is the reason why we're recommending refusal on the impact on the joining occupiers. Again, the size of the dormers that are proposed exceed uh, considerably what would we would normally con uh, say would be acceptable. Um, and given that uh, this is in an area of special local character, um, yeah, the design is not considered acceptable. So uh, for those reasons, we are recommending refusal. This is the existing property and members will see that the surrounding properties are um, uh, bungalows as well uh, and this changes the character of the bungalow particularly to the rear um, and it would be very noticeable uh, change to the character so um, it is uh, recommended for refusal for four reasons thank you chairman thank you for taking us through that meg um, this is our third petition item of the evening and we do have a couple of statements to read out i think we've got petitioner statement. I think you've got a ward councillor statement as well, haven't we, Liz? Uh, yeah, that's correct, Chairman. Okay. So um, we have a petitioner statement. We also have an agent statement and two oh, right. um, okay. ward councillor yeah. yeah. um, yeah. statements on this. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll start with the petitioner's um, written representation, if I may. Um, so the petitioner says, I ask that members of the Central and South Planning Committee consider my comments on the application as lead petitioner. Firstly, I would like to thank the planning, planning officer, Ms. Kinley, for providing a very detailed report on this case. I appreciate the time and effort by Ms. Kinley, offering all, covering all the aspects in a very thorough and detailed manner. I, along with my 50 petitioners who are all living locally and have a keen interest in ensuring that the standards of the ASLC are respected and safeguarded, fully support the recommendation of refusing the proposed development. I would like to emphasise and highlight some of the facts of this application. The proposed side slash rear extension by virtue of its size, scale, bulk and proximity, exacerbated by the elongation of the roof to the rear, would be detrimental to the amenities of the adjoining occupier at number eight in terms of loss of light outlook and over dominance. The proposed side addition would, would result in development spanning almost the entire length of the property, sorry, depth of the property, 
it would establish a permanent development along the boundary with number eight, lacking any form of a setting. Moreover, the overhanging guttering and drainage along this entire boundary wall would be in the space of number eight, and so any roof slash guttering maintenance that will be needed cannot be done without accessing the neighbouring property at number eight. The planning application deems that the current side extension is an established structure where in fact it is only a, a 4.5 inch single brick built lean-to structure with a plastic roof and only serves as an outbuilding. The planning application, application also deems that this side extension runs along the entire side of the property where this temporary lean-to structure is only 10 feet deep. The overall proposed development by reason of its design, scale, bulk and siting would fail to remain subordinate to the original dwelling, engulfing the original built form, particularly to the front side and rear, such that there will be an adverse cumulative impact of the proposal on the character, appearance and quality of the existing street or wider area. In the planning officer's report, it is mentioned that there is space for two parking spaces and retain 25% landscaping space but in fact there is only space for one car unless the approach to the front porch area was to be altered and changed to accommodate the second car. I've attached two photos taken from different angles to show the space available which is really only for one family saloon. Meg would you mind sorry just quickly showing those two photos again the last two which were um, provided by the petitioner? Yeah I'll... thank you. Yes, so I think the petition just wanted those to be to, to be shown, just to show the um, the different angles of the space uh, available there. Thank you, Meg. Um, the dormer on the south side alongside number 12 oversees the side entrance door resulting in loss of privacy. The rear development results in reducing the size of the rear garden to the extent that it would be inappropriate for a five bedroom house. I thank the committee for considering the points I've made in support of the petition and the officer's report and hope the committee will be able to confirm their recommendations of refusal. So that's from the lead petitioner. Um, we have something also from the agent. Um, who sets out the development, which is a single story front extension, single story side rear extension and conversion of roof space to include two side dormers and conversion and extension of rear of roof from hip to gable end. The site and locality, the application site comprises a detached bungalow situated on the northwest side of, North, of Fraze Avenue with its principal elevation facing the east. The site backs onto the Fraze River. The existing property dates from mid 20th century. The property features a projecting garage to the front with a gable end roof with waney edge timber cladding. The main portion of the property has hipped tiled roof. The site lies within the Garden City, West Strait, an area of special local character or ASLC. Fraze Avenue is a cul-de-sac that terminates at the River Colne to the southwest. The surrounding street scene is predominantly residential in character. There are a mix of properties with various size and appearance within the locality and no two properties are similar. There are large double storey properties opposite the application site, which dominate the site appearance surrounding them. Therefore, the effect or impact of the proposed development at the applicant site will be negligible. The proposed scheme involves erection of a single storey front extension, single storey side rear extension and conversion of roof space to include two side dormers and conversion and extension of rear of roof from hip to gable end. The site is partly within the floodplain, but the extension is located outside flood zones. FRA confirmed this. The Environment Agency have no objection to the application. The development is outside of the eight metre buffer zone to the river. In terms of assessment and impact of the development, the surrounding street scene demonstrates multiple building designs and styles. There are very few properties with similar appearance. The proposed development is therefore designed to significantly enhance the street scene, considering the layout and appearance of the existing surrounding properties. It is understood that a part of the proposed design does not fully comply with the Council's guide guidelines. However, Council policies also state that planning applications are looked at on their own merits. The, the proposal complies with the main guideline that the height of the proposal should not be above the existing height of the property. The proposal being made is to extend the existing property which meets the requirements of the applicant whilst also enhancing the surroundings of the street. 
a recent application at number 45 Fraser Avenue, among others, where the proposal was to de demolish the existing bungalow to allow for a double storey extension was approved. However, this application for number 10 Fraser Avenue is to build the extension upon the existing building as opposed to demolishing and rebuilding. The proposed scheme for number 10 is a more environmentally friendly and less disruptive option than demolishing and rebuilding. Therefore, as number 45's proposal has been successful on the basis of less disruption and environmental damage, amongst other factors, it would be ideal if this application could be looked at on its own merits. I believe the application satisfies both the, both the applicants and the council's requirements, hence an approval as the outcome would be ideal and welcomed. So that was the um, representation from the agent. Um, we just have two... Um, from councillors so from firstly from ward councillor sweeting um councillor sweeting says i ask that the members of the central and south planning committee consider my comments on this application as ward councillor firstly i must declare a non-pecuniary interest in this application as i live in phrase avenue but would however ask that my comments are considered by the committee as the application has implications for the continuing status of the garden city area of special local character I support both the officer's recommendation for refusal as well as the petition which asks the com committee to refuse this application for a significant number of reasons. In essence, if approved, it would create a residence on a small plot which would not be in keeping in this area of special local character due to its size, bulk and dominating appearance. It would be completely out of character with the original modest bungalow and the low rise modest form of development which is characteristic of the Garden City. It would have a very negative impact on neighbouring properties, especially number eight, Fraser Avenue. It would set an unwelcome precedent at roof level, having a devastating impact on the character and appearance of the ASLC. Members will note that the word devastating was used in the officer's report. It will not take into account the surrounding scale of development, considering the height, mass and bulk of adjacent structures. It would set an unacceptable precedent and result in further erosion of the ASLC. It would fail to remain subordinate to the original building. There would be a loss of light and outlook to the property at number eight, Phrase Avenue. It would not have sufficient amenity space for a five bedroom property, which highlights the modest size of the site and the original property. The roof alterations and extensions, by reason of their size, bulk and design, would completely fail to harmonise with the original building. I would further like to comment on the size of the front amenity space, which is suggested in the report could accommodate two cars, as well as leaving a small garden area. Having visited the site myself, I would suggest that this be re-examined as it is a very small area, which has in the past been only able to accommodate a car of average size. I thank the committee for considering the points I have made in support of the petition and the officer's report and hope the committee will be able to confirm their recommendations of refusal. And finally, a short statement from Councillor uh, Stuart Mathers, who says, Dear all, I wish to echo the comments made by Councillor Sweeting and support the refusal of this application. Residents have significant objections to this application due to the size and loss of light and the loss of special uh, of local character. And uh, that concludes all the written representations on this item. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for that, Liz. I think you need a sip of water now, don't you? Definitely. Yeah, I think I do. <laughs> um, now, on that, uh, I'd like to thank the petitioners, the agents, Councillor Sweeting, Councillor Mathers, for submitting their written statements. I'm sure the committee members will take those comments into consideration when we debate this item. So we can go to that debate now. And I had a very early hand up from Councillor Chamdow. Thank you, Chairman. The uh, report says it all for refusal reasons. I don't think that we need to go too much into it. Uh, but I think it's worth asking, uh, I don't know whether we've got a highways officer today, around that question of the two cars, uh, whether that can be included or not. Uh, but I think that's it could be a valid point because on the plans, it doesn't show whether it's going to be the walls taken down or whatever. Uh, if you just get clarifications on that. Uh, and then also, then I would more than happy to take it uh, uh, forward as go with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Chamdow. Meg, uh, can you pick up the point there raised around parking? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think that when we looked at it, um, we did feel that uh, they could get two cars in there with um, uh, sufficient landscaping to comply with our standards. It, it would need uh, a change to the frontage in terms of the steps that are there 
um, but we could have conditioned that if um, uh, if we were approving the application so that a layout was submitted which would comply um, and I think they would have been able to do that. Thank you, Chairman. Any come back on that, Councillor Chandel? Thank you for that, Meg. That clears it up. Yeah. Uh, then I would go with officers uh, recommend yeah, go with officers recommend. To, uh, to move it. Councillor Dillon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I concur with uh, Councillor Chandel. We've got a few reasons to uh, refuse it, and uh, no report uh, has that many reasons if it's uh, as thorough and um, you know, borderline. Um, therefore, I'm happy to second it. Okay, no, thank you, Councillor Dillon. I'm not seeing any other members indicate this evening. No, so I think I can uh, go to the vote as we are moved and seconded. Um, we are moved to uh, go with officers' recommendation to refuse item eight this evening, starting with Councillor Ahmed Rolana. Chairman, go with the officers' recommendations. Thank you. Councillor Bira. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I go with officers' recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Bira. Councillor Brightman? Go with officers' recommendations, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Brightman. Councillor Chamdown moved, so that's Councillor Chubidar. Uh, for refusal, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dillon seconded. Councillor Duncan's not with us for this item, so that's uh, Councillor Hagger. Yes, four officers' recommendations of refusal. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Hagger. Liz, I make that seven out of seven unanimous for refusal. Can you confirm? Yes, Chairman, that's confirmed. Okay, I can confirm this evening and item number eight is refused. Okay, thank you to everybody for their contributions in that debate. We can remain in West Drayton for the next item, not too far from uh, Fraser Avenue. Chairman, um, sorry, before you move, can I call uh, Councillor Duncan, please? Unless Councillor Duncan can hear us and she can join. <laughs> so if you if you call her Councillor Beer up, then we'll all just wait until Councillor Duncan joins us. Oh yeah. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. Yeah. Are you back, Councillor Duncan? Yes, I'm back from the ether. Thank you. <laughs> right. Welcome back. <laughs> we had a nice time to see you as well. Um, Thank you for the phone it. call. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, we can move to agenda item nine now. We're staying in West Drayton for this one, um, 27 Furzham Road. So, uh, Meg, can you take us through this application, please? Another petition item this evening. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is an application at 27 Furzham Road, which is uh, one of a pair of semi detached properties, very attractive. Uh, late Victorian, early Edwardian probably uh, properties and uh, the proposal is to add uh, a two-storey side extension and uh, a part two-storey, part single-storey rear extension. Um, officers are concerned and have set out the reasons why um, in relation to the design of the extension uh, and also the impact that the extensions would have uh, on the properties um, on uh, the uh, side of the um, the existing dwellings in Ruffle Close. Um, so for those two reasons, we are recommending refusal. I think it's probably easier if I go directly to the presentation to show the uh, scale and design of the proposal. Um, So this is the location plan and the constraints. It is in a parking management area, but it isn't uh, in any protected area. So it's not a conservation area or uh, an area of special local character. But uh, as I said, the properties themselves are uh, attractive uh, and reflect the character of the road. And that's the existing site plan and members will see uh, the proposed. There is a uh, a gap to the side of the extension that's proposed, but it is uh, proposed to have a um, an odd shape of extension which follows the boundary, um, which leads to a number of problems, including the roof design. Um, the rear of the property has uh, what uh, a lot of uh, old Victorian and Edwardian properties had, which is a two-storey outrigger, uh, and again, that is part of the design and character of the. Uh, 
uh, of the property and the road um, and that that and the design of the side extension uh, would result in the whole of the character of the, uh, the property being lost really um, so that is the existing uh, first floor and proposed first floor uh, and the existing and proposed ground floor elements um, and these are the existing sections and proposed sections and members will see from uh, this the roof plan because of the shape of the uh, the, root, the extensions that are proposed there are issues with how to uh, marry the existing um, uh, building into the proposed extensions which results in this element to the rear uh, and a, um, a, a parapet element to the front um, and to the side of the property which looks particularly um, unattractive um, so these are the existing elevations uh, and the proposed so you get a flat roofed uh, sort of parapet element going all the way down uh, a very shallow pitch roof a double hit to the rear um, and again that is all um, due to the side or to the size and uh, the scale of the extensions and the shape that uh, uh, that's being proposed so um, it, it really doesn't um, go with the character of the property um, and members will see that it is an attractive property and reflects uh, the properties that are in the road and, and the extension is not really designed to um, complement the existing property uh, the other issue is the uh, how close the properties in ruffle close are these are the properties that are impacted um, and at their nearest point they're just over 11 meters um, from the proposed extensions and given that um, usually we require a minimum 15 meters uh, we feel that that would be too close to those properties and uh, be in sort of overbearing and, and result in an over dominant effect uh, on those properties so uh, for two reasons we are recommending refusal these are this is the rear of the property and again the outriggers are part of the character uh, and they do go uh, all the way along the road um, and extensions uh, should be designed to reflect uh, both the front and the rear character of the road um, and this in particular is not in your officer's view um, at all reflective of that uh, so for those reasons we are uh, recommending refusal thank you chairman thank you very much uh, for that meg um, final petition item of the evening so liz what have we got by way of a statement for this one uh, Chairman, we've got um, a statement from the petitioner and also one from Councillor Sweeting. So I'll just start with the statement from the petitioner. Um, as lead petitioner, I am detailing written representation of the objections to the above application. Firstly, I would like to thank the committee and officers for the efforts in your findings and we fully support your recommendation. Our objections for the above application are as follows. There is no parking space in front of the proposed house. There is no space to create additional parking space as stated in the proposal as my land adjoins number 27. There is also a lamp post which provides light at the end of the cul-de-sac which the street do not want moved. The street is made up of semi-detached dwellings and having a new build attached to number 27 would be out of character with the rest of the street. Residents in Ruffled Close will have less sunlight in their back gardens if the extension is built so near to their properties and their properties would be overlooked. Some residents already have sewage and water pressure problems in the street. The additional housing will cause further problems. The applicant does not live in the street and therefore it is not an opportunity to develop his own home. If the planning application is granted, internal plans can be changed to suit a house of multiple occupancy. We already have HMOs in the street and this puts further pressure on parking. In the past, tenants have been disrespectful, noisy and not looked after the surrounding area. The application site is also the subject of a planning application for an attached dwelling, in brackets, new house. We look forward to your favourable decision. And that's from the lead petitioner. And then the statement from Councillor Sweeting. 
I ask that the members of the Central and South Planning Committee consider my comments on the above application as Ward Councillor for West Drayton. I support the officer's recommendations for refusal and the points raised in the petition of residents. The reasons for refusal are well explained in the officer report, namely that the proposal, if approved, would be a significant overdevelopment of the site and would have an adverse impact on the character and appearance of the street scene and would produce a building which would not be subordinate to the main dwelling. As the officer report describes so well, the side and rear extensions would entirely engulf the existing attractive semi-detached dwelling. In essence, the shape and appearance of the original Victorian dwelling would be lost forever. The roof design would be ug intrusive, ugly and overpowering, again not in keeping with the original building. The development would also have an adverse impact on neighbouring properties, not only in Furzen Road but also in the adjacent Ruffle Close, which would experience loss of outlook and amenity. The development would create a property of excessive size and bulk and of poor design, completely out of character to neighbours' attractive dwellings. I therefore ask the committee to support the officer's recommendation and the petition of, of residents. I thank the committee for considering the points I have raised and my re request that the application be refused. And that was Councillor Sweeting's written representation. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Now, thank you to that, Liz. And again, as ever, thank you very much to the lead petitioner for submitting your statement. And second statement of the night from Councillor Sweeting. So again, thank you for uh, submitting those. Right, we've heard from officers. We've heard all the statements. Uh, let's open the debate up. Was that a hand up there, Councillor Dillon? Excellent. And then followed by Councillor Chamdow. Councillor Dillon. Um, thank you, Mr Chairman. The uh, applications and the actually good reports from officers are making our job quite easy tonight. Um, I can't see many many things to argue or argue with or uh, to, more to elaborate on, really. It's uh, all written in the report, a number of reasons why the application is not within policy and affects residents, uh, and it's not in character. Uh, therefore, I would move officers' recommendation. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Dillon. Uh, Councillor Chemdow? Thank you, Mr Chairman. Councillor Dillon's hitting the nail on the head. It's not much going for it. I'll second it. Okay, any other? Councillor Duncan. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I mean, the, uh, the extension is actually larger than the original house. And uh, I, I noticed in the report how it picks up that even the, where it starts off at the side, it's more than half the width of the original dwelling house which is part of our policy that we do not like extensions larger than that but with it flaring out at the back it's massive um, and I did uh, pick up the point that I think the petitioner made that uh, by having this development it would not be possible to have any off-street parking here. Now at the moment I don't think they're in a parking management area, I think everybody parks outside their house. Um, but should the pressures become greater, and they are all the time in the, in the south of the borough, um, I, I do think that where there is space for people to be able to park off road that take that into account so i don't know if there's any way that uh, we can put in a further reason for refusal about that Duncan. meg is there anything you can uh, pick out from councillor duncan's comments there yeah um the actually the um the property is in a parking management area um there are um parking or uh, residence bays on the road uh, and the actually the property um, to the or the space to the side isn't accessible for parking um, I think I can demonstrate that if I go back to the presentation and show you the photograph Yeah, so this shows that it is in a uh, parking management scheme. There, there is a there are marked out bays on the uh, on the street, and then if you look at the side of the property, there isn't any access available. Um, so the the road stops where the end of the property is in a way, uh, and there's no access available to get into the side with a, with a vehicle. 
um, so it's not usable as a parking space. So at the moment, they park on the road, and um, uh, that would be the case uh, even with the extended property. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Duncan, did you want to come back? Uh, I think the situation is a little different from how it looks. I do. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I hadn't appreciated about it being a parking management area, but of course I've been down there myself, and I do know that it is. It has got those restrictions, but um, I think uh, this area that you can see in the photograph on the right hand side, it's a little sort of communal garden on a piece of the old Air Force land where Ruffle Close was built um, that residents uh, in Furs and Close have made into a little communal garden. But I think at the, on the other side of this, I think um, it is possible, maybe you would have to move that uh, lamppost which I note the petitioner did say residents wouldn't be happy about. But I think if you move that, you could actually gain access to that uh, um, side of the property. But um, it's not a huge point and we're refusing it for a number of reasons. Um, so I won't pursue that. Thank you. Thank you, Duncan. We are moved, we are seconded. Um, I'm not seeing any other members indicate, so I will at that point move to the vote. Starting with Councillor Ahmed Walana. I go with the Office of the Recommendations, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Bira. Thank you, Chairman. I go with Officer's recommendation to refuse it. Thank you. Councillor Brightman. Go with Officer's recommendations, Chairman. Councillor Chamdao, you seconded. So, Councillor Chubadar. Uh, for refusal, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Dillon, you moved. So, Councillor Duncan. Refusal, Chairman. Thank you. And Councillor Hagger. Yes, for refusal, Chair. Thank you. Liz, I'll make that unanimous eight out of eight for refusal. That's correct, Chairman. Okay. Can confirm uh, agenda item nine this evening is refused. Thank you, everybody. That's the last petition item of the evening. Um, so now we can move swiftly on to agenda item 10, which is the NAVNAT Centre Printing House Lane in Hay. So Meg, can you uh, take us through this one? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, very quick presentation. Um, NAVNAT Centre members will recall uh, extensions coming before this committee uh, previously. Uh, relating to the uh, rear, the dining hall and terrace um, and uh, members approved that extension um, and the proposal um, in essence includes that extension. It is uh, slightly different in terms of its design but in terms of its size uh, it is uh, exactly the same as was approved by members um, back uh, in uh, the um, part of last year. Um, so the, the increase uh, over and above that relates to a single storey extension to the side uh, to provide a library, uh, an IT area uh, and storage. Um, and again, if I go to the presentation, it's probably uh, easier to indicate uh, the, uh, where the extensions are that are being proposed. So these are the site plans and members will see this is the existing plan uh, or layout plan uh, as existing um, and the proposed extensions uh, and um, terrace area. The terrace area is here, the extensions are here um, and that is uh, as was approved by members previously in terms of its size uh, and then the single storey element is in this position uh, here, this is a double storey uh, element uh, that is existing. Um, this is the design of the rear element uh, that has changed slightly. We think it's an improvement on uh, the, um, the approval previously, so we are recommending it uh, um, on that basis. Uh, as I said before, the, uh, the size has not changed at all and therefore uh, we consider its impact on the green belt to be acceptable. Um, and then uh, the existing ground floor and the proposed. So you have uh, the extensions in uh, beige and then the terrace 
uh, and then the single story element uh, in this position here, uh, which is a library, IT and uh, storage area. Uh, this, as I said before, is a two story uh, element that's existing. So single story elements that are proposed and this is the, the new element, if you like, over and above the previous approval. And that has a green roof on it. And these are existing sections, existing elevations, uh, and then the proposed elevations to the rear and to the side. And this is the actual extension that's being proposed. Um, it is slightly misleading in that members may think it's a two story element because of this, but that's the existing and the black is the single story element uh, that's the proposal um, unfortunately the scale of these is difficult to uh, uh, to make out um, but the, the these plans are quite clear so um, we feel that um, in in overall terms uh, members approved an increase of uh, 43 percent um, and this is an increase over and above the 43% by about, or by approximately 2.86. So um, it goes from 43 to uh, just over 45, near a 46% uh, increase over and above uh, the original size of the uh, property. And um, we feel that in the green belt, it is a large extension, and that was the case uh, previously, but. Um, we feel the impact is limited, um, particularly of the new elements that's been added, uh, and we are recommending approval on that basis. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, um, Meg. Okay, just got to remind myself this is, isn't a petition item this evening, so um, no statements to read out. But I think it's worth reminding members that this application, um, albeit a different one, has benefited from previous approvals for part of what is being presented to us this evening. So uh, who would like to uh, start the debate off? Any takers? Councillor Brightman. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, to me, this looks pretty straightforward. We approved it last time and um, I'm, you know, I'm happy to go with officers recommendations unless anyone else objects. Okay, thank you, Councillor Brightman. Councillor Duncan. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I mean, on the face of it, this is quite a small thing. Where we really departed from policy was in the 43% that we granted. And I mean, don't let's forget that this started out as I think it was British Airways um, sports uh, facilities, and this was the pavilion. It's now, I notice it's referred to as a community centre, but I don't know that it is a community centre for for Hayes, um, I'd like a bit more detail about that if possible, but it looks as if it's becoming quite a large established commercial establishment within the Greenbelt. And I think we need to keep an eye on that because, you know, it's very easy to take a pavilion, uh, you know, put a big extension on it. And I agree, it all looks very pleasant. Um, but in the end, you're going to end up with a very large facility with a large number of vehicles there. So I'd like a little bit of clarification about that, please. Thank you. Okay, I've got Councillor Tandow indicating, but I'll allow Meg to pick up on the points that uh, Councillor Duncan has made and Councillor Dillon after Councillor Tandow. Meg? Thank, thank you, Chairman. It, is, it isn't a commercial building as such. It is a community building it is for uh, the the navnat center it's um uh, for, it's difficult to explain it's it's like a, a community uh, from a part of india uh, and they've um sort of uh, emigrated here and obviously they've um set up and bought this building as uh, as a community center uh, for for that community, so it is a community building, um, and uh, it isn't a commercial enterprise as such. It is used for weddings and so on. So um, obviously, um, they would 
charge for that, but um, um, it isn't uh, set up as an enterprise uh, for uh, commercial purposes as such. Um, so we, we, it is a community building um, and therefore um, we've treated it as that. Um, it is a large extension and I think I made that clear when uh, the previous application was before us, um, but um, the it's difficult one because generally in the green belt we would say that a limit of 50 percent uh, is is the maximum and um where you have an existing large building 50 percent of that is going to result in <laughs> in a large extension so uh, that's the case in this particular case so uh, we are recommending it on that basis but um as i said before we have approved uh the the majority of the, the building in the previous application, and this is a, a small part of it um, uh, that's being proposed here. Um, and I think they're probably reaching towards the end of uh, any further extensions that they may be able to make on this. So these are probably the final ones that are coming before us. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Meg. Councillor Duncan, did you want to come back on any of that? No, I, I think that's uh, that's very helpful. I certainly wouldn't want to see any more um, extensions uh, on this. Thank you. Thank you. Right, I've got Councillor Chamdown followed by Councillor Dillon. So over to you, Councillor Chamdown. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I remember this application and quite right, Councillor uh, Duncan did make the... It's a massive, it was a massive uh, extension. Uh, I supported it. Uh, on the assumption really that there wasn't going to be anything else after that that was it was built at the back so it wasn't visual from the from the front of the property but i think uh on meg's point uh i think is there anything that we can put in say listen that is it you know really because another few percent here you know i i would be concerned about that as well uh but in the bigger picture of things uh it sort of falls in place uh, but it's, it's above the 50 percent. We let it go last time. And I, I would want to see some sort of control to say, you know, that's it. I think, James, uh, you wanted to come in at that point. Um, um, well, I, I, I was just wondering that there was a comment I wanted to make with regards to Councillor Duncan's point. But I'll, I'll, I'll quickly, uh, we, we, we have added an informative in the past. Uh, on cases, we can't condition, there's nothing else we can do, but if members so wish, they can delegate to officers to add an informative to indicate to the applicant that we wouldn't support further extensions given that it's a green belt site. I, I wouldn't see a problem with, with doing that, and I think that would be quite a straightforward thing to delegate to officers. But just picking up on the point Councillor Duncan said, I was just looking at condition seven. It says the dining hall hereby approved should be maintained as ancillary to the main use of the site and should not be run as a separate operation. But the condition at the moment doesn't actually specify the main use of the site. I, I think a bit more text could be added to the condition um, because condition seven is quite important. And if members are happy to delegate to me, uh, I, I think, uh, or, or whether they delegate to me or it's something that the chairman and Labour leader wish to see the final wording of, I, I, I think we should strengthen condition seven. Thank you, chairman. Yeah, could I just come back on that, um, chairman? Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, James. I, w I welcome that clarification on the point I made and also uh, support Councillor Chamdell point that we should put on an informative or something to so that we don't want any further extensions and i would appreciate it if that use could be um put in and if that can go to uh the chair and labor lead because otherwise this is how just by small means uses change and then they become something else and it's slipped away from uh planning control in a way that then impacts on a number of issues a number of people a number of businesses and we don't want that to happen so thank you if that can be done thank you thank you councillor duncan well, i've got councillor uh, dylan and then councillor ahmed walana so over to you councillor dylan thank you mr chairman oh um, not much more to add i believe uh, just as information there is a covenant on this uh, land uh, when British Airways sold it, that does uh, pertain to it being only used for community use or leisure use. Um, oh. I don't think it could ever become um, an, an, 
use for an enterprise or, or housing, etc. I was um, tempted to vote against this actually because uh, because of the add-on effect of uh, small and small increases. But um, I'm pretty sure if uh, James can put in uh, that wording, then um, I'll be minded to vote for it. Um, I've got nothing else to add because everything else has already been said. Okay. Thank you very much for your comments, Councillor Dillon. Councillor Armid Bulana. Thank you, Chairman. I'm not a big fan of approving applications on a green belt, but in reality, uh, this building is a community building. It's for greater cause. Uh, whether we like or we don't like, it's there, and it's a large extension. And um, I, um, I agree with my colleagues to have a, uh, a planning control to, to some extent and also that use uh, would be purely for community use. So there's nothing else, uh, you know. Okay, thank you, Councillor Ahmed Walana. I just want to go back to Councillor Brightman, because we're not seconded yet, I do, unless you did, Councillor Chamdow? Okay. I'll happily second it with the informative regards uh, yeah. further controls. That's what I just wanted to check with Councillor Brightman, because she moved before that debate um, are you still happy to add the informative um, about use and then beef up Condition 7, delegated definitely. by James, and then checked off by myself and the Labour lead, yeah? Uh, definitely, Chairman. Okay, good. Just wanted to check that for completeness. So um, I'm not seeing anybody else indicate we are... Oh, Chat Councillor Dillon. Mr Chairman, should they still be minded to come back with an application two, three, four, five years down the line? Would that informative... Uh, from the committee be in uh, any other in, in the report that would come back to a committee james uh, the, the, yeah. the thought process of the informative is that if we did refuse a subsequent application it kind of um effectively we forewarned the applicant and it, it might help us at appeal um sorry i'll, I'll, I'll pass pasta to, to meg as i think he was about to comment yeah, I think so. The informative clearly goes on the uh, decision notice um, and it basically sets out to the applicants that uh, um, members have considered uh, the site circumstances and they feel that um, the proposed extensions are the maximum that, uh, uh, that the site can take, uh, particularly given its location in the Greenbelt. So um, it clearly sets out that in the future, if uh, any further extensions, even small ones, come forward, then members are likely to. Uh, uh, that's more than uh, the more than that is acceptable on the site. So um, it, it warns them, if you like. Obviously, you can't prejudge the application if it comes in, uh, but it does say to them, um, you know, you've reached your limit, and um, we're not prepared to. Uh, accept any further even uh, smaller extensions uh, beyond what you've what you've been granted if you like so um it i suppose it makes them think twice about submitting another application thank, thank you, you councillor dylan you okay with that uh kind of it's an informative it's information to them only it doesn't stop them from putting another application in. the reason for the question was that subsequently down the line if something appeared somebody would note that this committee made a decision and, you know, just made a decision to approve this, but that we advise no further uh, ap uh, applications should be coming in. Uh, that, that way the, in the, the committee at that stage would have the information that we, would, we found it difficult to make that decision. But if that can't happen, it can't happen. I mean, that, that would be, obviously, that would be on the minutes and it would also be on the decision notice. Um, so um it the case officer if a new application came in would need to uh, look at that and will note that and obviously hopefully put it in uh, the report so that these were the thoughts of the previous committee okay chairman it's uh kerry kerry do you want to come in yeah. yes thanks chairman just to add um for clarity the inform informative is not binding it's not enforceable it's simply a note on the planning um, grant for permission 
that the council is not happy with such and such and should they make a further request for um, planning permission, um, the issue would be taken into account. So, And it kind of gives, if it's appealed, um, gives the planning in inspector an insight as to the council's uh, feelings towards, um, say, in this regard, additional uh, development on the green belt. So it's just a... Um, what could I put it as um, a, a flag? Yeah. That's exactly the point. It, it puts a flag in future applications, doesn't it? But um, OK, some good debate. I'm not seeing anybody else indicate. We are moved. We are seconded. Just to remind members, we are moved for approval with two points, um, an additional informative around future extensions and to add to condition seven, which will be shared with myself and the Labour lead um, to be added to the approval reason should should it be approved. But we are moved, we are seconded, so I will now go with Councillor Ahmed Walana. I go with the officer of the recommendations in addition to Thank you. Uh, the further um, uh, conditions, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Bira. Thank you, Chairman. I go with the officer's recommendation to approve it with the, with the conditions on. Yeah, thank you. I think we got those. Uh, Councillor Brightman, you moved. Councillor Chamdao, you seconded. Councillor Chubadal. For approval, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Dillon. Approval, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Duncan. Approve with the amendments, please, yeah. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Hagger. Yes, for the chair. Good. Okay. Liz, I'll make that eight out of eight. That's correct, Chairman. Great. Okay, I can confirm. Agenda item 10 this evening has been approved with a couple of amendments. Um, some good debate, some good scrutiny there. So thank you, everybody. Right. Um, agenda item 11 we can move on to now. Um, we've had this one before. It's quite a straightforward one. So Meg, I mean, unless unless members are minded to have the full presentation, Meg, I think if you just give us an overview um, and then we'll just have some debate and, and move it forward, unless there is a desire to have the full presentation. But it is a very straightforward um, amendment to the condition. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, it is very straightforward. The uh, previous condition restricted it to a certain uh, time limit. That time limit has expired uh, and the request is to increase that time limit uh, for another two years. Um, this is for parking uh, for the hospital staff uh, on this site and um, I would guess that it's more necessary now than it may have been um, at the time the application previously came in in 2017. So uh, we are recommending it for approval. All the previous conditions have been uh, put on as per the previous. So um, very straightforward and uh, uh, it's up for approval for further two years. Thank you, Chairman. OK, thank you. I've seen some members indicate already. I've got Councillor Chamdow, Councillor Brightman and Councillor Duncan. So Councillor Chamdow. Yeah, no problems with this at all, uh, Mr Chairman. Uh, it, it, it's much needed parking. Uh, can't wait until a new hospital is built where we have fit for purpose parking. But until the meanwhile, I mean, the, when the garden centre was open, it was a lot more busier. You know, you'll have, you'll have traffic jams a bit further down. Now, if you go down uh, Pete Heath, it's, it's a lot more smooth. There's a lot more better. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll go with officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Brightman. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I just wondered why it's only two years, because it's highly improbable that the hospital is going to be built within two years. I wondered if it could perhaps be extended a little longer. Um, <laughs> thank you, Chairman. Um, I think that was the request that was made, uh, although if members felt uh, um, that, you know, it, it would save us time, if you like. Uh, and effort in a couple of years because it's likely that it will come forward for another renewal that members might consider a longer period and usually temporary permissions we might grant for a maximum of five years um, so members may want to consider a, a five-year permission thank you chairman thank you uh, for that i'm sure people will have some views on that so we've got councillor duncan thank you chair yes uh, it is needed even more so, as Councillor Chamdell says at this time. Um, I, I would move five years, actually, because um, 
we don't want it to be established as a, any kind of public car park. I mean, that site is in the green belt, I think, isn't it, Meg? Um, so we definitely don't want to that to be established, but it is tied only to the hospital, I believe, isn't it? It's not for general parking. We need that. The hospital is going to be redeveloped and we will need the parking um, during that period of construction as well. So I would like to move five years then in that case. Thank you. Um, I think Councillor Chamdale did move. If he's happy to go with the amendment for five years and would you be okay to second that, Councillor Duncan? Very, very yes, happy. I'm yeah. happy to second. Thank you, Councillor Chamdale. Good. And uh, thank you, Councillor Brightman, for raising the point. I've got Councillor Tubidar. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I was just going to reiterate the point uh, the other councillors have raised, which is uh, it is needed and uh, we should really support a five year extension. And uh, therefore, I go along with uh, the recommendation, the last recommendation, which was made by Councillor Duncan, and support mm -hmm. five years. Thank you, Chief. I've got James Roger indicating. James, do you see any? Yeah, it's just a small yeah. interest. I, I might need to just double check procedurally. Um, there's nothing we need to do to change it from two to five. Therefore, would members be happy to delegate to me? to not only approve with five years, but to do any sort of last minute um, kind of procedural things. Mm -hmm. So what, what I'd want to do is to double check, we don't need to do any further consultations or anything like that, but uh, I, I'm hoping with that we wouldn't, but I, I'm just saying if I don't ask now, <laughs> then it, the whole thing would have to come back to committee. So can I request if the committee's okay with it, that they delegate to me to, to not only approve, but if there is anything further procedurally required to do the necessary steps. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, lots of nods from councillors, but uh, well, I'm going to quickly check with Kerry. I'm just thinking, it depends, um, James, how it was put out for consultation um, around the, the um, people that would be impacted, the people, the residents, the businesses, the you know local users, stakeholders in the area. Um, but I think that's a, a sensible thing. I mean, because the thing is, representations would have been made on the duration. If it was advertised as a two-year duration, then representation, representations would have come in from the public in that regard. Um, but I, I think it's a sensible thing to do, given that the hospital is coming in two years, to have a um, an extension of time for a temporary permission um, to cover this issue. So I don't see any harm. I think it's been weighed up sensibly and um, the view has been taken that this is, it's necessary um, to avoid, to address any harm and to make sure it's cohesive. Um, but I think it's sensible as well, again, that um, James is gonna check to see how it was put out to consultation to make sure that the facts to the public is, um, that the public, has not been disadvantaged in looking at the the year. So I think that's the way to go. If James gets delegated authority, as he's um, suggested, I think that's the way to treat this application. I think that's the direction of travel we will take, but I've got Councillor Duncan indicating. Yes, thank you. If I can just uh, refer members to page 84 and the um, uh, external consultees, when um, adjoining owner occupiers uh, numbering 23 were consulted there was only one response received from the public consultation and apparently they said um, and we can read it for ourselves the previous application was to prov provide parking for hospital staff only this application does not specifically refer to hospital staff parking there is no objection to the continued use provided it remains as before restricted to hospital staff only. Should the, the intent be otherwise, then I would require further details of information to give an opinion. So that was the feedback from the public. And that's why I asked about, and um, for clarification, that it is only going to be for hospital use and was told yes. So if we can actually put that in the, uh, you know, the, um, uh, you know, the permission that it is hospital staff parking only, um, I think that that may cover that. 
because we only received one response mm. and their only concern was that it be for the hospital. But obviously, I agree to it being delegated to uh, James for that to be checked out. But based on what we've done already, there wouldn't appear to be any objection to us extending it for five years, providing it's just for hospital staff. Yeah, I can quickly clar clarify condition two totally addresses that point. Okay, that's good. And again, some really good scrutiny from uh, both uh, members and officers or supporting officers. So uh, we are moved, we are seconded uh, to delegate uh, authority to James to investigate the extension of the uh, parking for five years. Um, so I'm not seeing any other members indicate so i will go to the vote on this one starting as ever with councillor ahmed walana and for approval and uh, dedicated authority to head off and planning thank mr chairman thank you councillor Pera. thank you chairman i go with officer's recommendation also for extension of five okay. years uh councillor chamber you moved councillor chubadar for approval mr chairman thank you councillor dylan for approval, Mr. Chairman, with the uh, Councillor Duncan, you seconded. So that leaves Councillor Hagger. Yes, no, Chair. Thank you, uh, Liz. I make that eight out of eight for approval. I think you missed delegate. out. Sorry, Chairman. I believe you missed out Councillor Brightman that time. Did I really? I think because I had Councillor Brightman. I feel ever so bad now, but Councillor Brightman. Um, I go with officer's recommendation and de delegated powers to the head of planning and the extension for five years. Thank you. I have too much scribble on this piece of paper. That's much my excuse. Um, so, Liz, thank you for uh, for rescuing me there. Um, I'd make that eight out of eight. Yep, that's correct, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, so, agenda item 11 is approved with delegated authority to James Roger to investigate the option of moving to a five year extension instead of two. Thank you, everybody, for that. Uh, should we move to agenda item 12, which is uh, Hayes Park? Hayes End Road, Hayes. So over to you, Meg. Thank you, Chairman. Um, very quick presentation again. Uh, Hayes Park members may know as the old uh, Heinz headquarters. Um, three elements to the scheme. The site is in the green belt. Um, three elements to the scheme. Uh, there's the provision of uh, cycle storage, uh, a trim trail, and then some outdoor seating. Uh, all very minor. Um, it is a bit misleading to say it's external cycle storage because it is uh, within the covered car park um, and it's sort of underneath, if you like, uh, taking up some of the existing spaces. Um, so if I go directly to the presentation, it's probably easier to explain uh, that in that way. So the overall site, these are listed buildings. Um, and if I go to this plan, uh, the trim trail and seating is in this position and then the cycle parking is uh, in this area here. Um, if I go, so this is the car park or the ground floor of the car park and the, site, the uh, parking spaces here are being uh, taken up with some cycle parking in this manner. So there are some cycle parking spaces that are lost, but uh, there is a, a large area of parking or large parking space uh, that is still being retained, um, which would serve the existing buildings. Um, again, it's probably easier if I go to the photos. <clears throat> so this is where the trim trail seating area is. Um, and then this is the covered parking area uh, and the park, the cycle parking spaces are going in this position here. So uh, it is, I suppose, external, but slightly misleading in that it is covered. Um, and that's the spaces themselves. So, and then the trim trail is going in this area here uh, and the seating here. So um, we don't have all the details uh, of the equipment that is going there. So we are recommending conditions uh, that require the submission of those details, but the trim trail is 
in, in essence an outdoor exercise area so it will be um, outdoor exercise equipment that would go into this area thank you chairman okay thank you uh, for that meg right um councillor duncan thank you uh thank you meg i think it's straightforward i'd like to move officers recommendation okay thank you very much for that, councillor duncan councillor Dura, i can see you indicating Off, off mute button, Councillor. Sorry, it's very okay. straightforward and I've got no hesitation for a second it to approve it. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Bira. I'm not seeing anybody else in the car. Oh, Councillor Chamdow. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, wonderful idea. Get fit. We've seen it with the introduction of all the uh, playground equipment that the council have put in into various uh, small parks, large parks. I'm not a great fan of. Healthiness, I think, at the moment. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm trimming down now. <laughs> no, no, no. Getting people cycling again, uh, getting out and about, I think it's a fantastic idea. And uh, I think it's always been uh, second year as well. So I just want to support it. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you very much for your comments, Councillor. Um, I'm not seeing anybody else indicate we are moved, we are seconded. We can move to the vote. Um, Councillor Ahmed Walana. I go with the officer recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Councillor Bira, you seconded. Councillor Brightman, I'm not going to forget you this time. Go with all <laughs> recommendations, Chairman, particularly as it won't be visible from any surrounding properties. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Chamdow. Yeah, definitely go for that, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Chubadar. For approval, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Dillon. Approval, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Duncan, you moved. So, Councillor Hagger. Yes, four, Chair. Thank you. Liz, don't tell me that I missed anybody, but I make that eight out of eight. Yep, that's the full house. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. So I can confirm agenda item 12 this evening is approved. Thank you, everybody, for your comments. We can now move on to the last item in part one this evening, which is Westcombe House, 36 38 Windsor Street. Quite a famous building in Uxbridge. Um, so over to you, Meg. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, as you say, uh, a well-known building um, it is a very attractive building locally listed um, and that is one of the reasons i don't know if that's me liz but i think we've uh meg froze I, there i think he did freeze but i think you're back aren't you meg you're back now meg okay thank you um the area uh that was uh the, uh, the flat off occupies was uh, uh, intended originally to be a lobby for the residential development or the residential uh, provision within the site um, however um, there were issues about designing that there are steps outside and obviously the facade is uh, a very attractive facade uh, and to provide the lobby to accessibility standards uh, was proving very difficult so uh, it was redesigned uh, and the accessibility uh, entrance area was provided in another location uh, which the council's ac access officer was uh, um, uh, happy about and therefore uh, this space was um, unused and uh, empty as it were uh, and it is quite a large space so um, the provision is for a one bed unit which is above the size that uh, we would normally require of 50 square meters um, it is in fact quite an attractive uh, unit because of its location in the curve uh, of the building um, and um, we are recommending its retention as a, a one bed unit. Uh, members can see from that that it is quite a large unit. It has uh, quite a number of windows to it and um, internally uh, the photographs you can see that it's quite an attractive um, unit to have if you um, were living there so um, we are recommending it uh, for approval and um, the, 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 the original issue was that there were steps uh, this is the accessible entrance that is now being provided um, and the issue previously was that uh, the changes in the levels uh, in this area here would have resulted in external changes to the building which 
um, which would not have been acceptable because of its local listing and uh, the fact that it's in the conservation area. So um, a solution has been found and uh, this area is, is providing a, a good one bed unit. Um, the application is subject to 106. The, uh, the flats, the rest of the flats in the building are subject to parking permit restrictions and uh, um, we feel that uh, this should be included within those restrictions as well. So uh, that's the reason for the 106 requirement. Um, so with that, it's recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for that, Meg. Um, I don't know if members wanted to see any slides on this or... No, I'm not... Uh... No, okay. We will then go to Councillor Duncan. Um, I, I'd just like clarification of where the entrance to this um, flat is going to be, please. Meg, sorry, you're on mute at the moment. We can't hear you. Sorry, Meg. Sorry, I was sharing the presentation with myself before, um, thinking that I was presenting to members. So if I go back and uh, and do the presentation again, <laughs> this is the location plan. The, the flat is located in the corner of the building um, and the main entrance is in this position here and there are photographs which show that. So um the, the the reason why um it's an issue is because uh this is the internal uh, flat it's very attractive uh provides a very uh, good one bed flat um and the previous the issue was that um, um because of the levels it would have needed substantial changes to the entrance area uh, and to the external appearance of the building to provide the level access that was required um, and this is a locally listed building and therefore um, it was considered that uh, a, a better solution was available and that was to provide this entrance this level entrance here into the building uh, which serves all of the flats including the new one so um, uh, the uh, the solution that was found was uh, acceptable to the council's access officer um, and uh, this space was surplus, uh, therefore, and uh, is providing uh, an, an additional one bed unit up over and above the council standards. So we are recommending it. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, you. Meg, I'll could you just you explain them. how you get, no, can you explain, you go in through those doors, I can see yeah. on the plan. So and then those we're... doors are in this position, so you can get into the unit in here so this serves the whole building right so you kind of go into yeah. that where so the glass doors are then you yeah. go in and yeah. then you go, then you go underneath that staircase yeah so you go in there yeah or you go up that staircase or whatever yeah yeah so, so you, you, in, you enter there. you enter through the bedroom then yeah so you enter through the bedroom yeah and, and from the bedroom goes. you can come into the hall and there's a shower room off that and off yeah. the hall there's also the kitchen lounge diner area that's right yeah right so you enter through the bedroom it, it was just unusual i wasn't sure i was reading it right thank you very much for that clarification thank you <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Duncan. I've got Councillor Chamdale followed by Councillor Dillon. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know. If Meg was present. You're trying to sell the flat to us, uh, but yeah, look, it's 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 it's, it's another it, it's another flat. Yeah, I'm sure the developer must be absolutely over the moon with that. Uh, it was best use of the space now. Uh, not great coming for a bedroom, but you know, I'm sure they can configure that around some way. Uh, and I'll go with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Chamdale. Um, Councillor Dillon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Meg, the outside, the corner door on the outside and the internal wall, how are they treating that? Because 
the last thing I would want is a, a thin wall, someone uh, being able to hear people urinating outside in that doorway, etc., or congregating in there and shouting and screaming. So um, how are they deal with that? Nate, can you pick that point up? Um, yeah, so the works are already done and um, it is like a little area that has been left, if you like, and um, I suppose it would be possible if uh, uh, for, for, for the uses that Councillor Dillon described, but um, because of the fact that the building is locally listed and so on, it's difficult to, to close it off and, and not impact the external appearance of the building. Did you want to come back, Councillor Dillon? Um, yeah, well, they, uh, I agree with you there, and I thought that might be your answer. Would it not be possible to put some sort of glazing in to protect it? Meg, anything you think we could do there? Do you want mute, Meg? Meg? Unmute. Sorry. Um, we could explore that with our conservation officers and applicant uh, to see if that was possible. Um, and maybe a, a decision is uh, delegated. It is a 106, so uh, we do have some time to possibly explore that uh, and maybe um, delegate the decision to the head of planning uh, if that is possible. Would you be okay with that, Councillor Dillon? Yes, wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. Just, uh, Thank you. It would be, you know, if somebody is doing that, you would be able to hear it through through the walls. So we just yeah. need to protect the tenant. Okay. Um, thank you. I've got Kerry indicating. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Meg, when you mention locally listed, do you mean listed building? Listed building? Yes, it's a locally listed building, so it's not a statutorily listed. Is it, gra uh, is it grade two? No, listed? it's not grade one or two. It's okay. on the local list. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you for that, um, Kerry. Right, I'm not seeing any other members um, indicate, and we are moved, but we're not seconded yet on this one. Uh, Councillor Brightman? Happy to second uh, with delegated um, authority to the head of planning to sort out the bits and pieces. Yeah. That's, that's how I describe it, the bits and pieces. But yeah, okay, we're, we're happy for you to uh, second that. So I'm not seeing any other in councillors indicates so we can go to the vote. My members, what we're voting on is to approve item 13 this evening, but to delegate authority to head of planning to address with the uh, issues in the corner there. You know, the the, the entrance, which uh, used to be the staff entrance many years ago, if I recall. Um, but yeah, so if we can delegate that to yourself, James, um, to negotiate that through the 106 process, um, just to protect that corner for future residents. Okay, we are moved and seconded. Councillor Ahmed Wallana. For approval, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bira. Thank you, Chairman. I go with officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Brightman. You seconded, Councillor uh, Chamdow. You moved, Councillor Chubadar. For approval, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Dillon. For approval, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Duncan. For approval, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Duncan and Councillor Hagger. Yes, for chair. Thank you. Okay, I can confirm that's unanimous eight uh, votes for approval, Liz. Can you confirm? Yes, that's confirmed, Chairman. Thank okay, you. Okay, I can confirm. Gender item 13 this evening is approved. Okay, that brings us to the end of part one. So uh, thank you to all those who have been uh, watching us on YouTube and a public thank you from me to all officers and members for their participation this evening. But we are going to disconnect the YouTube feed now as members now go into part two to debate some items in private. So good night, everybody. And over to you, Liz, to disconnect us. Okay, just bear with me one moment, please. Um, and I will uh, stop the live streaming.